Hey everybody, this is a review of the Elephone S8. So I've been using the S8 for about two weeks now, on and off. I would say I took in the two weeks, I took it out into the streets for a full day, six times, so about six days of use. So I'm liking this phone a lot. Um, this phone sells for 270 US dollars right now, so that's a little bit more than the Doogie Mix or the Maze Alpha, which can be had for about, what, like 180 or 200. So that means this phone is about 80 bucks more. But I think if you are willing to pay more money, then I think this is worth um, considering over the other two because this display, 6-inch display, it's better. It's a, it's a higher resolution display. It's a 2K resolution at 26, 20, 2640 by 1440 resolution. So that's a lot more pixels on the screen than the Doogie Mix's 720p resolution. The chipset is also better on the Elephone S8. There's a Helio X25 chipset inside, so it's a bit more powerful than the Helio P chips in the other two phones. Um, in the in MediaTek's line of chips, the X phone is the flagship line. So I want to talk um, about the navigation a bit. In my unboxing, I mentioned that the Elephone S8 doesn't have navigation buttons out of the box. Instead, you navigate using this fingerprint reader slash capacitive button. So how it works is very similar to Meiju's setup. So basically, you tap on the button to back up or you double tap to go home. And if you want to bring up overview, you just long press on the fingerprint sensor and now you have all your apps in overview format. So it's a pretty intuitive setup, but when you use this, you lose out on two key features of Android 7.0. The first is um, quite important to me, which is jumping back and forth between apps by double tapping on the overview button. So this is something that I do a lot and you cannot do on the Elephone S8 if you don't have navigation buttons. So the other thing is split screen mode. So you long press on the overview button that will let you split screen two apps side by side. So the Elephone SA, if you use this setup out of the box, you don't get to do these features. But good news, there is a way around it because in settings, there is an option to bring up navigation buttons. So now that you bring up navigation buttons, you do get to jump back and forth between apps by double tapping on overview button. And you also can do split screen mode. So you can hold two apps side by side. In fact, the Elephone SA offers one more feature that a lot of other sites, do, uh, a lot of other phones do not. So, when you actually no, you don't even have to long press on the button. Sorry. So when you open up a page, you see this little fourth icon here. This is to make you minimize the window into a floating window, and you can drag it around. And I think in theory that allows you to open up other apps too. I haven't used this feature that much, but. It seems to be quite useful. Yep, so you can have two apps side by side. So now I have Chrome right here and YouTube right here. And let me see if I can do one more. Can I open Google Maps maybe? You can. So you can open three apps, probably four, but I think when you get to four, it will probably start getting really buggy. And also, it's, it's it's just a bit too small to run Google Maps. You can't even see anything right now. So you can bring it back to full size with just a tap of the button. You can also pin it to the home screen. So now you, I think this will always stay on. Yeah, it won't move. So very useful feature on Elephone's part. But you know, I just don't. I just prefer not to have the navigation buttons on there if I don't have need to. You can hide the buttons, but I. I personally find that if I have a phone with such a big chin with a physical uh, button right here, it feels really weird for me to still go with navigation buttons because I just I'm used to trained to just press this. So I I'm kind of torn. I don't know if I should go with the original setup out of the box or the setup with the navigation buttons. So as mentioned earlier, the Elephone S8 runs on a Helio X25 chipset. That's a little bit more powerful than the P chips, uh, Helio P series found on the Maze Alpha or the Doogie Mix. The X is MediaTek's um, like flagship line. So you can see 
from the benchmark scores, it's pretty respectable. 1743 single core, 4202 multi core. For a phone that's 270 bucks, that's really good. So I jump around between apps a lot. I did some video editing on this and I also play games on this. And gaming performance is smooth. So I play Madden, play like Mortal Kombat X and various games and the iPhone S8 was able to handle everything. But ultimately, I think this phone is worth buying because of this display. So I'm going to play a 4K uh, video right now. Obviously this phone cannot display this 4K video in full resolution, but I just want to show you how good the screen looks. So I'm going to I'm going to turn off the light too so there's no glare or reflection. So um, as you probably just heard right now, this phone only has a single speaker grill, so that's why when I pulled the phone towards me, the sound got muffled because my finger covered the grill. But this this display, I mean, colors are very lush. It tends to be a little bit on the warm side, but details are amazing. The contrast is really good. And you know, this um, display gets... It, it doesn't get that bright, so when you're out in the sun, you have to max volume up to 100% to be able to see. But otherwise, again, 270 bucks for this display, for this kind of almost bezel screen, it's just stunning. Okay, so the phone is getting a little bit hot right now on the back. So I, I do find that when I push the phone a little bit, it does get a little bit hot. So now let's talk about the camera. The camera app of um, this phone is pretty bare bones. As you can see, you have a video recording button and a camera shutter button. And then up here, this is panorama mode and you have this picture in picture mode, which which takes a picture or, you know, of, of using both cameras to take a picture basically. So other than that, there's, there's not much else. I mean, you go into settings and there's some bare bones settings here, but for video, you see that um, video quality, you get to shoot in high, medium, or low, but they don't tell you what resolution that is, or fine, which is a 4K, 2K. I don't know what that is, but it's definitely not 4K video. So um, you do get to set white balance and all of that right here. So it's kind of like a manual control, but it's just a little bit awkward to have to go into settings to set all this instead of just bringing manual control out from the side. So you do get a bunch of filters that are kind of fun. But other than that, that's it. It's a, it's a pretty bare bones uh, camera software app, but it is um, quite intuitive. So the selfie camera, like the Mi Mix, is on the bottom. So when you bring it on, you have to flip the phone upside down just to take a picture. <clears throat> I don't mind that that much, but I don't really take selfies anyway. So um, I do have one big problem with the camera is that the focus is really slow. So let me give you an example right now. You see how that took like a second to focus on Groot and even now it's still not that focused, it's still not that clear. Let me do it again. So it always takes about like a second. So it takes like a little, little pause before it focuses on the face. And you know, I, I know it's not a fair comparison because this is a Galaxy Note 8, it's like so much more expensive than the Elephone S8. But I'm used, used to a phone like this, which focuses like immediately basically with this camera anytime i bring anytime i bring it on any object or bring any object into frame focuses immediately um so this has been a problem when i'm out in the street trying to take a picture of like cats or cars and i just always miss the shot because the focus is so slow but to elephone's credit they actually told me they will fix this um, focus problem with a software app with a software update so i'm hoping that would be the case. That that did help with the Mace Alpha. Remember when I first got the Mace Alpha, the camera was really, really bad. And then the software update came and actually fixed everything. So because a lot of times photo quality is not just determined by hardware, but also software. So looking at photos though, um, pretty much same story with typical budget phones. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna blow you away, but if you have good lighting, you do get some good shots. Like this McDonald's picture here. I thought it came out pretty well. Um, this this photo here, you see it's completely overexposed, the sky, but you do get good details right here on the street signs. 
So food shot turns out okay. It was pretty good detail. This freaking bacon was so good today. Um, but night shot is hit or miss. So right here, as you can see, the quality is not good. And I took this picture in my dark living room and you, you really can't barely see anything. So the camera is, it's okay for now. So like you look at this picture of this dog, it's a little bit blurry overall. But you know, again, this phone is 270 bucks, so I can't really complain. And and me saying that Note 8 focuses a lot faster is completely not fair because this phone costs a thousand dollars US. This phone is 270. So for one Note 8, I can buy three Elephone S8 and then still have some money back to like freaking get a massage or like go eat a buffet or something. Moving on to battery life. Battery life is excellent. The Chinese phones always have great battery life. So I am able to get four and a half hours of screen on time per day on average. I mean, I use this for over two weeks, close to two weeks on and off. So I've used this about six days, I would say six, seven days. Four and a half hours of screen on time on average. So this is a uh, pretty solid. So um, if you're on the market for a bezel-less phone, you know, like if you look at the iPhone X and you think it's so damn cool, but you probably can't, you know, you don't want to spend that much money to buy it then the Elephone S8 is maybe a good alternative. I mean, 270 bucks for this beautiful screen with a almost bezel-less display. Thanks for watching.